Carrie Bullock. I'm the chairman and CEO of Thermo Energy Corporation. We have some special technologies for allowing us to remove and recover uh, re reusable resources from municipal, industrial, and agricultural waste streams. We also have a technology for doing something similar in power for removing CO2 and emission products from the combustion process. And those are, those are very widely applicable throughout the world. Well, we recently announced the Unity Power Alliance uh, venture, which is a venture to promote the uh, development of pressurized oxy combustion technology uh, through the demonstration phase and into commercial plants. Uh, this is a very interesting technology because it's probably the latest wave of technologies that are very efficient for burning carbonaceous fuels like coal. So we're hopeful that this is a technology that will find its way into coal plants going forward. So when you think of all these coal plants that we hear about shutting down, we're hopeful that we can repower them so that they can continue uh, being beneficial but without uh, with near zero emissions. Well, the strategy for us is uh, simple. At the highest level, it's to go where people are buying the products. But the way we do that is we segment the markets that we go into, and I'll talk a little bit about that. We get the intellectual property that we think that uh, we capture or develop intellectual property that we think is important for those markets. And then we go after those markets to try to find a key customer and expand into that. I'll give you an example. We have a $30 million project with the city of New York to remove ammonia from the wastewater before it's discharged into Jamaica Bay. That's important because if you don't do that, uh, it gradually creates algae growth and things like that, and then the eutrophication process will really create a dead zone in those areas. So removing nitrogen is very important. We turn that into uh, a fertilizer. Um, those are the kind of things that we do. New York, uh, once up, will be a key project for other cities around the world. We also are working in the biogas industry also for removing nitrogen. Uh, whenever you do a biogas energy plant, which is taking manures and waste products from farms, agriculture, even industry, uh, often you put those into anaerobic digesters to break things down so that you can treat the waste and use it. It will often produce biogas that you can turn into electricity. And you have a waste stream which has heavy ammonia. That has to be treated. So we are, uh, we, we are allied with some key developers who are building those plants. We're targeting those plants not only here, but also in the United States. One of the other interesting things that's happened in uh, commercial aviation is today, the de-icing fluids have to be picked up and cared for. In Europe, regulations have already passed. In, in the United States, regulations are about to be passed that will require airports to pick up the spent de-icing fluids off the runway or the pads where planes are de-iced and to treat them properly. We have a way of turning what would otherwise be a cost into a revenue stream. So if you bring the de-icing fluids to our systems, then we can recover the glycol out of them, which is the, the uh, defreezing part of it, if you want to think, and we can reuse that. Um, and the recovery part of that only is well under a dollar. So if you think of that as a commercial product that normally sells in the five to seven dollar range, it's well worth an airport's recovering that even if it's just to sell to a local glycol market. We're also in the process of, uh, of moving into the fracking market. Our technology is particularly important there. And with the allowance of uh, more massive fracking to increase uh, natural gas production and oil production in the United, in the United States, uh, that's a part where our technology can be used to clean up waters there. So what we've done in these areas is intellectual property that allows us to protect our parts of the market, then to move in and find key customers, and then to try to do it repeatedly. And again, that's, that's not only market segments, but it's geography. So in Europe, we're attacking the biogas market because with the German feed-in tariffs that originally started many years ago, thousands of uh, biogas plants have been produced. Uh, those wastes today are paid to be hauled away. What we expect to do is turn those wastes into reusable products so they don't have to be hauled away and to reduce the, uh, the, the cost that you would have to pay there. Uh, we're also moving into Latin America, which is growing very rapidly in these same areas, using agricultural products to turn them into fuel products. And in the process, 
guess what, produced a lot of ammonia that has to be treated. So those are just some of the ways that we're doing. But again, intellectual property, key customers, key markets that are growing strongly so that a small company like us can kind of ride that wave going forward. And the long-term outlook of the company is very favorable in my view. Uh, we have uh, uh, increased our revenues dramatically uh, year to year uh, since I joined the company. Uh, the business we're looking at is in growing markets. We've got good positions. Our products are very competitive. So I think if we follow that formula of not getting too far ahead of ourselves, getting markets where people will buy these products, that we will do very well. We're expecting to. There are several reasons. First of all, we're in markets that are, going, that are growing rapidly and are enormous markets. The power market that we work into, if you think about the next 20 or 30 years, is going to, you know, is, is not measured in billions, it's measured trillions of dollars. Now, we're not all of that. We're just the boiler section of that, uh, if you come back on, on the fossil type fuels. But that's a large market. And as we <clears throat> try to look for cleaner ways to produce power, technologies like ours, I believe, will find a very comfortable place in that. Other trends that we're following, uh, that, that we're really on top of, is the world is really needs more clean water. If you read the articles from China today, there's a massive effort to clean up the water supplies there. Even in the United States, where we have long, <clears throat> we've had the Clean Water Act, but we, we, we haven't always enforced it as well. And we've got areas where we have dead zones in the Chesapeake Bay or, or, the, or the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, these are areas where people are going to enforce regulations more. Uh, to make that a cleaner environment, that's something we will benefit from. The world needs clean water. Population uh, also puts pressure on food supplies, which requires more fertilizer. So taking these chemicals and reusing them into products that can be used like fertilizer is a very good thing. The world also is becoming a much more carbon conscious place. Now we may not have a carbon regulation in the United States today, but a lot of the world today is looking at carbon regulation and management of carbon is a very important thing. Uh, our technology on the power side, we think, is going to be a very important uh, element where people uh, deal with carbon and manage carbon going forward. So these are kind of the major macro trends that we as a smaller company are a part of, and we believe these things uh, will be the kind of things which with good management, capital structure and things like that, that help us as a company to grow and take advantage of, of these markets.